Hello everyone, my name is Sander Kokart and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. We're going to record just a second video just because I can and I want to. I'm getting into it, so why not? Uh, and we're going to continue right off with a new video, uh, this time tuned to the entire add or create to do function. Uh, in the front end only, uh, the back end is something for later. Uh, and we're also going to do that for edit and for delete later down the line in the upcoming episodes and then finally we'll start doing the back end uh, and work with that so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to turn this entire thing into a form uh, so form we're going to remove the action uh, and we're going to just cut this and paste that to the bottom and the reason we do this is because a form cannot be inside a table but we can put an entire form around a table so with that being said we now have that text field. Uh, we can also add a label to this, by the way, which is going to look a lot nicer. So uh, we're going to say new task. Uh, and that label will look like this. So you can now see new task here and you will have this like reshape when you click on it. It's really cool. And then also what I want to do is go to that map and we need to add a key here. Now, the key is used to organize arrays inside the state. So Whenever a state changes, it's going to generate a key for every single item and it needs to be different. Otherwise, it's going to start tracking the same item. We don't want that. We don't want any confusion. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to put parentheses around the to do comma index because map doesn't only have one input. It also has an output index and that's what we're going to use now. So we're going to say index. I mean, we're only having one item. So actually we can get away with only the index. Uh, we do want to say to do though we want to say to do uh, and add the index to it uh, simply because that will just look a little bit nicer so um we only have one item because th that is the only reason we need to use like only index because we don't really need anything else it's because we only have one type of thing in the in, in in the array don't try and think too much about it we now have a key prop the error goes away it's all good um so next up, we're going to have this form give a on submit and that on submit is going to be context dot create to do. Uh, and it has a uh, input, which is going to be add to do, which we're going to create now. So what we're going to create is a const and we're going to create an array. And inside here, we're going to say add to do, which is going to be the text field. Uh, and then we're going to have a comma and then set add to do and then equals use state. And the initial value is an empty string because we're dealing with the text field. It cannot be null. It needs to be an empty string. So we're going to go to that text field, add a value per, uh, attribute here. And that's what we're going to set it for that. And then we have an on change method, which makes sure that it's controlled. So every time we tr change something about it, it's going to update in the state. So the state is always going to be up to date with whatever we enter in it. And it's not going to be able to be meddled around with too much. So on the on change, we want to use an arrow function. And inside there, we want to use uh, curly brackets this time because we're doing JavaScript. And we want to say set add to do. And uh, what we want to do is enter the arrow functions event. So we're just going to put event here in the parentheses and say event dot target dot value. And that's going to make sure that this particular text field's value is going to be set into the state every time it changes. So that's going to set that. Uh, and then the on submit, we're going to have that add to do. Yes, that is correct. And am I missing anything here? Probably, but we'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, let's see. Okay, we have a problem here with a state transition. So, oh, sorry, this on submit is not correct. It's again supposed to be an error function. There we go. Did that fix it? Yes. So put everything also always in an error function unless it is a method or a function being called directly into this um, because otherwise you're going to have problems and it runs the command immediately. And of course it can't because it's empty. So this works now with an error function. It works and uh, we can start typing and press the, 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 the button. But what we can also do now is because it's a form is enter and submit it. So what we also want to do is change this button. So the icon button to type submit so that when we press enter, it's just going to instantly press the button as well. So test and it's just, it's, it's supposed to just, 
immediately do the button as well in case we want to. So test, and it's just gonna submit the form. It will act the exact same as it would if you were to just press enter. Um, so with that being said, now we can go into the front end uh, and what we're gonna give this, uh, we're giving it an add to do as a value. I don't actually wanna do that. I wanna give it an object uh, and that is gonna be a, a to do with a name and it has add to do in there. So now we can go to the context and uh, whoops. Yeah, I do already did a pre-recording. Don't mind me uh, to see what I was gonna do and I forgot to delete that. But anyway, we're gonna have an incoming to do. Uh, we want to get the old to do's. So let to do's uh, equals, and it's going to be an array. And we're just going to use the spread operator for this dot state dot to do's. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to push to that. So push. And what do we want to push? The to do. The to do is already an object. So we could just instantly push it. We don't need to do, for example, create another object with a name and then the to do, no, and then to do dot name. No, 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 no need for that. We can instantly just push the entire to do to it and that will settle that. And then we need to set the state. So set state and we want to set the to do's to the to do's. Right? Because we want to set these to do's as the new to do's. Right? So, uh, I mean, we can also say data, for example. For example, I mean, it's an option. You could do that. Um, but yeah, there we go. So that will now just function correctly. Test and uh, okay, but we've still got problems and that's because it's a non-submit. The form submits. What does a form do when it submits? It refreshes the page. We don't want that. So we're gonna go into the event as well. So I'm gonna have to get E comma to do. I'm gonna have to get the event as well. So let's see. Uh, we need to have access to the event as well. So I'm just gonna do event here. And I'm just gonna add uh, this to this. So I'm just gonna say comma event, add that to it as well. Like so. And then inside here, we should now have access to E, which we're gonna just put behind here. So which is gonna be the event. Should have access to it, let's see. There we go, synthetic event, I have access to it. And the reason we want access to the event is so we can do event.preventDefault. Uh, what it does is it prevents the default action, in this case, which is to submit and refresh the page. We don't want that. So with prevent default, it should not do that no longer. So we submit and it submits to the bottom. You see that? Every time we press enter, it adds more. Now we want this to actually appear on the on the, on the top, we don't want this to appear on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that map function again, and we're going to create a copy. So we're gonna go to context.todos. Uh, sorry, not splice, but slice. Um, I mean, what is splice anyway? It's delete, right? Yeah, no, we want to slice. So context.todos. Slice. Dot. Or sorry. Uh, parentheses. Dot reverse. Again, parentheses, and that'll do it. So let's take a look, test, and let's see. Cannot read property type of undefined. Uh, oh yeah, this is a problem with uh, LastPass. Don't worry about that. It's just an error that I get because it doesn't recognize this particular text field and it tries to read it, but it can't. But yeah, test, 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 test. It just adds to the top instantly all the time. And the reason we create a slice or a copy, uh, I mean, if I use splice, what's it gonna do? It is not going to load anything, <laughs> but slice creates a copy of that of those to do's and uh, we reverse them and then we map them. So the reason we create a copy is so that we don't get messed up data. If we were to not slice this, you'll see what happens. So I'll add a test and I'll add another test. Where did that first test go? It went to the bottom. So let's refresh that again to just make sure that we see that correctly. So test, test one. Ah, okay, so now we get a bunch of issues. So test, test one, that works. But the second it's the same. Oh, look what happens. I just entered test or on change and it just, on every change, it goes back and forth. Yeah, we don't want that. So that's why we add the slice and now we can say test. And whenever we change anything, nothing is gonna change. So we make sure that it's not altered. So that's why we do that. So that's the add function, the create to do function, 
uh, how it works, how it's set up. Uh, and this is just the front end. We still need to do the back end, but that's for another episode. We're first going to have to focus on the update and the delete function in the front end. And then again, like I said later, we can do the back end. So uh, that has been another episode. Thank you guys for joining me here today. And uh, hopefully you learned something. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Peace.